Hola. Hola. ¿Se me oye bien? Sí. Bueno, pues vamos a ver, eh, a seguir con el programa y a cumplir lo prometido. Decíamos que íbamos a tener eh, toda la jornada de hoy y toda la jornada de mañana a los mejores expertos en accesibilidad y concretamente en accesibilidad cognitiva de España y del mundo. Y por eso nos acompaña hoy Caroline Corner, que es una mujer austriaca muy experta en el tema de accesibilidad, fundamentalmente accesibilidad cognitiva, coordinadora de Capito. Capito es una parte de una organización social que se llama Atempo y que eh, tiene su sede fundamentalmente en Austria. Es responsable de gestión del conocimiento y también ha sido subdirectora de accesibilidad en dicha organización, en Atempo. Ha trabajado en turismo para todos y salud en turismo y su idea es que todas las personas tengan los mismos derechos y puedan aprender y trabajar. Y además, como he dicho, es de las mejores expertas en accesibilidad cognitiva de Europa seguramente y nos va a contar su experiencia. Cuando quieras, Carolina. Well, good afternoon. After the lunch break, I would, last, I would ask to stand up, please, for me. Not for me, just for an exercise. Those who can, who are able to, could you please stand up? And those who are not able to, uh, can just participate as much as they can. It's just a short exercise. Okay, um, please listen first. I'm just reading some orders to you, and I ask the translators um, to uh, translate, this as, to translate it as fast as I speak. Put your hands in the air, turn around, do a squat, put your fingers to your nose, clap your hands, shake your head. Let's go. If you finished, you may sit down again. You may sit down. Thank you very much. This exercise should simulate having learning difficulties. It is very difficult when not having one to simulate it. I hope nobody understands it the wrong way. I just want to say that everybody can learn everything when he or she can do it in his or her own tempo. And that's also the name of my organization, it's a tempo. With accessibility, it's a really weird thing. We can send rockets to the Mars, but at the same time, we can't organize public transport so that people with disabilities can go wherever they want. We can build machines which we can control by our minds only. But we fail to write information which people can understand who really need it. Do you know the feeling of being absolutely confused because of incomprehensive co information? It's so painful, isn't it? I'm from Capito, and we do not want to accept that. Our work is to get rid of all those barriers, and we cut it down so that people with learning difficulties and disabilities in general can live a li life in our society like others do as well. Seven, 7.5 billions of people live on Earth at the moment. 15% of them have a disability. They are blind, don't hear well, are wheelchair users, or have learning difficulties. Disability can be different. 
For most people, disability is a very individual problem. The one concerned with has to solve it. If you have a learning disability, for example, you have to find a person who translates a difficult text for you. All of us are individuals. This picture shows it. It shows our society. Every one of us can find him or herself in the picture, can't you? Some of us are tall, some of us are small, some of us are wheelchair users, some of us have learning difficulties, so all of us, what do we want? Everybody wants to sit at the same table, no extra tables. We call it the table of our society. No matter how different we all are. At one common table, meetings can take place between different people. But the important point is, we can't pretend like everybody was the same now, just because they are sitting all at the same table. Making everybody equal doesn't work. That's why we have to find solutions. Solutions which are good for individuals, and which are good for us all. Solutions which make it possible to be different, but also take part. The great challenge for us is the back side of the table. What you see is the individual access to the table of our society. Everybody needs a different form of access. But once having that access, we are all equal. So the Atempo offer is providing individualized access. To give you the most important facts about our company, Atempo is a non-profit organization in Austria. We have more than 70 employees and one-third of them are people with disabilities. But what is our job? As I've told you at the beginning, it's all about access. The first area of a tempo is called Nueva. People with learning difficulties are evaluating accommodations and factor factories and so on from the consumer's point of view. With Nueva, people with learning difficulties get the empowerment to evaluate quality and standard of their facilities. Our next area is called Bildung und Karriere, which means education and career. We think that access to job education and paid work is very important for everyone. We empower people with learning difficulties to take part in our educational system. They are learning in a modular, individualized setting, for example, how to use iPads or mobile devices. But the key to access is and knowledge and information is capital. We provide those products, knowledge and information, under the, no, under the name of capital. We will stay at uh, capital for today. Uh, it is the field we are talking about here because capital is going to be distributed in the capital franchise network. So in general, you can see it's all about accessibility. What if everyone?
What if everyone could understand everything? Our vision is all people get their information and are able to read and understand it. Nobody needs to be ashamed because of not being able to understand. Not understanding an information is a problem which is caused by the writer, not the reader. We are solving that problem. At Capito, we make information accessible. Uh, we translate all kinds of texts for information booklets, websites, other kind of media. Topics are, for instance, law, health, official decisions, culture, safety at work, all kinds of topics. But who needs that? The following two slides look a little bit complicated, but don't be scared, I, would I will explain it to you. The German level one study shows that 40% of all adults in Germany do have difficulties in reading and understanding. That means that 20.8 million adults need information which is easy to read. They can read, but do not understand all of the meaning. Here you can see the European frame of languages. There are different levels of speaking and understanding a language. Just imagine you would like to improve your French. It won't be possible for us to visit the same language course because our levels are different. Some of us are just beginners. They understand only short and simple sentences. And they use well-known words. Their level will be A1, the lowest level. So they will visit a language course in the level A1. Others use, op use often used terms and might talk with someone about familiar topics. That will be level A2, and so on. Level C2 is the highest level, which means that the speakers of C2 understand everything like a native speaker in most cases. As you can see, it is just about people reading a special text or information to give them the level they need. To give you another example, B1 is the level of boulevard newspapers. B2 is the level of so-called quality newspapers. C1 is the level most of the information given by public authorities and companies. The problem we have now is that 60% of population reaches level B1. But 80% of the information of public authorities and companies start at the level B2. This slide also shows what, shows what I've told you before. The red columns show how German people read and understand information. Most of them have level B1 and B2. The gray columns show which level most of public authorities and companies use. In general, you can see that more than 60% of people cannot understand public information. This is why we developed a new model with steps during the last years. 
we referred to the European frame of languages. At level A1, we try to give the consumer a short and simple core information about the main idea. At level A2, the consumer gets more information, but even with little pre-knowledge, he or she can understand the text. Difficult words are explained. At level B1, the topic and also the language gets more complex. So, capito is the name for a method. For a method to create and design accessible information. If the accessible information meets the capito quality standard, you can get a seal for easy to read. You can see it on the right side. That's the seal, A1, A2, and B1. In German, it's leicht lesen, so it's LL. To get the seal, it is, for example, absolutely necessary to work with our own criteria catalog and to check every text with people with disabilities. The method of Capito is used by different people and organizations in Austria, Switzerland, and Germany. It was important for us to get the message across that Capito stands for professional work. We want to keep our promises. So we asked ourselves, how can we keep control over quality? And we decided to use the social franchising. It means using the franchise model with, without a view of profit, but a social aim. We wanted to build a network where quality of translations is secured and controlled. In the meantime, there are lots of people who have been trained. And lots of them are also capital partners. We actually have about 27 franchise partners in Austria, Germany, and Switzerland and more than 60 quality partners, which is a little bit less than a um, franchise partnership. Our partners are companies, governments, and non-profit organizations as well. But <laughs> in practice, there are some disadvantages of special solutions. The most important disadvantage in our case is that the consumer cannot decide for him or herself to which level he or she needs the, info <coughs> the information. Instead of that, the sender has to decide to which level he or she wants to send an information. But on what basis can he decide that? Which replies are in easy to read and which are not. And if he sends a reply in easy to read, will it be in level A2 or B1? You will agree with me that that is a very tricky decision without discriminating someone. Who gets what kind of information? So the offer of easy-to-read documents for consumers is an unflexible one. The consumer can't make a, decision, a level decision between one document. He can't get more information once he has the lowest level, A1. You may say that it would be the best to give the easy-to-read version to everyone. You could do so, yes. But there are lots of reasons for the need of different levels. The original text is important for the communication of professionals. And people who understand level B1 do not need all the explanations of A1. 
it would tire them out. That's why we wanted to create a new system. A new system to translate texts, administrate and connect them. We developed the Capito app. Let's say in future you'll receive a governmental notification like this one. Now the consumer finds a QR code. You can see it on the left side. Okay, the, the ring is a little bit below. <laughs> um, and the consumer scans the code and gets the notification on his smartphone. Immediately, you get the main information of the whole text. Here, you can change, okay, a little bit above. You can change the level. You make your decision on each side. And immediately, you get the most important information on a very easy to read level. On the right side, you can see the English vers version. Those who want to read the document in detail decide for themselves on which complexity level they would like to read it. From the absolutely easy to read level A1 up to the highest language level B1 and also the original of course. Or you choose the level for each passage. The more information, the higher the level. People with reading difficulties do not only get access to information, but they also improve their competences without being under or overstrained. Of course, you can also listen to the screen reader if you are blind. But what is about accessibility in buildings? A field of capito besides the information sector is tourism for all, analysis of buildings, consultation, evaluation of building plans, workshops for sensitization, and the CEDOS municipality network. I was asked to show you the database as well we have. Uh, we feed it with information about the accessibility of buildings and spaces. The questions are based on the norms of the using country. But there are also lots of questions which come from local organizations for disabilities. As you might know, um, not everything is fixed in norms, especially questions depending on accessibility for people who are no wheelchair users or physically disabled. The special point of the, our database is that we evaluate all kinds of disabilities. For people with learning difficulties, it is, for example, important to have a good orientation system maybe by using colors or by sensitizing people to find out what is important for people with learning difficulties. Afterwards, you can choose all kinds of disabilities or, for example, people with learning difficulties only. I hope you can see it on the slides or you can go on the website afterwards. I have chosen accommodations for people with learning difficulties. You can see 72 accommodations which have positive critics for people with learning difficulties. That's only Styria, a small part of Austria. Afterwards, you choose a hotel. You get some pictures and information about the offer with regard to the access to accessibility. But the most important point is, you can also have a look at the questionnaire. 
you can read every single question about the hotel you've chosen. Do you think everybody wants to read a very long questionnaire? No, not everybody. But for some people, it is absolutely necessary to get information about the room or the entrance widths of the door, users of an electric wheelchair, for example. That's why our trans evaluations are highly transparent. Our evaluations are done by experts and in most cases together with people with disabilities. That's the back end of the database and it, the usage is very multifacted. At the moment, we are using the database, for example, in the field of tourism. There are a lot of evaluations online at the moment, but those are the ones we did only. All partners are working with this database as well, and I really don't know how many evaluations there are in general. Also, the capital of Styria, that's Graz, orders a lot of evaluations of Styrian accommodations and excursions because they want to ensure that everybody gets the correct information. We also train communities to work with the database. And we evaluate building plans. The newly built University of Economics and Business was accompanied by us in terms of advice with reverence to the topic of accessibility. Our customers are also muse museums, and we help to create an exhibition accessible for all kinds of disabilities. And it's really fun to implement new techniques and to create an interesting exhibition for everyone. And we have already worked with the Capito app in museums. So no more audio guides, you can use your smartphone. So, what's next? You can imagine that there are many more possibilities to use this database and also the Capito app. Even people with disabilities can use them. What if a great platform for accommodations would use the database? What if other countries would use the database in different languages? Everybody wants to decide by him or herself where to go on holidays. Because the aim for everybody of us should be one way for all. Thank you.